in this video, I'm gonna show you how to decorate this Laudre Macarons cake. Hi, it's Carolyn. If you wanna learn how to bake and decorate amazing cakes, then I would love for you to join me by hitting subscribe and the bell. If you wanna skip the intro and get right into the video, there are chapters linked below. So today we are going to decorate this it's called Laudre Paris, and I actually never even heard of it until my friend sent it to me. And she sent me a few pictures and told me she wants the cake to coordinate with these pictures. This one, she wants the bottom tier to be like this box. And she just wanted some macarons on there. She wanted these certain colors, and she said she really likes bows and wanted to keep it really simple. So I'm starting with my cakes already baked, filled, iced, and they are in the refrigerator waiting to be decorated. I have videos showing you how I bake my cakes cakes, fill them, ice them, refrigerate them. All of that is going to be linked in the description and any tools that I use and any other videos that I reference will be linked down there as well. And I will also let you know how much I charge for this cake. So let's get started. All right, to start, I have Gumtex powder, CMC powder, Tylos powder. It's all basically the same thing. I mix it into all of my fondant. I only use marshmallow fondant, and it's going to help the fondant achieve a smooth consistency and make it so much easier to work with. I will link this in the description for you. Now you can see what this marshmallow fondant looks like before I add the Tylos powder. It's not holding its shape, it's pulling apart, it's not stretchy, you gotta work with it. So I have a quarter teaspoon here and I'm gonna sprinkle that on the fondant. It's about two pounds of marshmallow fondant, knead that together. And then I wanna make it this yellowish green color. So I have some leaf green here. I'm just gonna start by adding a little bit of leaf green and see what color I get. And I need to add a little bit of more green and a little bit of yellow as well. So I have some gold and I'm just gonna add some more and knead that together until I get the correct shade. So I need a little bit more green, a little bit more gold, and I just add a little bit of color at a time till I get the right color, and that looks good. And it's been about 15 minutes since I added that Tyler's powder. Look how much better that fondant looks. Now I got my cake out of the refrigerator. That icing is hard and solid. I'm not gonna mess it up. I have some piping gel and I'm just gonna wipe a thin layer of piping gel around the side of the cake and then dip that brush in some water so I can thin out that piping gel. I'm gonna cover this with the fondant. I wanna clean that cake board, sprinkle down some cornstarch, and I want to roll this out. Now I have a video where I go into detail on how I cover cakes with fondant and I'm going to link that in the description for you to reference. And after I roll out the fondant, I like to take a fondant smoother and just smooth out the fondant, smooth out any air bubbles, lift the fondant up and place it on the cake and just press around the top edge so the fondant doesn't rip from the weight of it hanging down. And I'm pulling it out at the bottom and using my hand to smooth out the wrinkles. And again, this is all covered in my video on how I cover cakes with fondant. So then I'm just going to take a fondant smoother and press it against the side of the cake and push it down to the board to really seal it. And then I'm gonna use my weird pinch technique. And I'm dragging my fingers together to create a sharper edge. I am not squeezing really hard. If you squeeze real hard, you're going to put fingerprints in the cake and that's not what you want. So I'm just dragging my fingers together to get the sharper edge. I had a little bubble there, so I have to pop that. And then I'm going to take a piece of fondant, dip it in the cornstarch and use that fondant to smooth the fondant out. And then I'm taking my pizza cutter and cutting off the excess. And that looks pretty good. Let's stick that back in the fridge. Now I'm rolling out the lid. So I wanna roll this out really long, press it down. And I'm just rolling a really long strip of fondant, smooth it with the fondant smoother. I have this ribbon cutter. This will be linked in the description. Cut a ribbon out. I'm smoothing the edges with my fingers after I make the cuts and taking my rulers and straightening that out. I have this clay gun and that little round disc, and I'm just going to lube that up with a little bit of shortening so the fondant doesn't stick. Roll the fondant into a log and fill that cavity, and then screw that back on, and I'm pushing down on the top and squeezing that out. This is a nice forearm workout. <laughs> and I'm just doing two long strips of that of the gold fondant. And then I wanna paint it gold, so I have some Rolcom Super Gold. This will be linked in the description. Sprinkle a little powder in that cup, and then I have some lemon extract, and just get a little bit of that in there and mix it with a paintbrush. And I'm just painting each of these gold. So I like to do two coats whenever I paint anything gold, so there's none of that light yellow showing through. 
Now I got the cake out of the refrigerator and I'm just going to the back and making a little mark. That's where I want the seam to be. I'm getting a little piping gel across where the seam is going to go because the piping gel really holds. And then I'm just using a little bit of Crisco around that top edge of the cake. This is where we're putting the lid. The Crisco is more forgiving, so I'm going to be able to manipulate that fondant into place. So I'm starting in the very back, wrapping that around and cut it where it meets and press the seam together. Now I want to leave a little space at the top as I'm doing this. So I'm taking a palette knife and I'm just making sure that it's straight. So I'm going underneath and I'm pushing it up wherever it's hanging down too far and then just making sure that it basically looks straight. Then I got a little bit of that icing coloring on there and I'm just using some Everclear Vodka to remove that. Now I have some piping gel on a tiny paintbrush and I'm just getting a little bit of piping gel. You don't want too much because you don't want it seeping out underneath. And then I'm taking that little golden log <laughs> that I squeezed out of that clay gun and just wrapping that around where it meets in the back, cut it and press the seam together. And then take your palette knife and just make sure that looks as even as possible. And I'm going to do the same thing on the top. And of course, this one I didn't roll out long enough, so I just got a little extra piece here and then cut it at the seam and put it together. Luckily, that's the back of the cake, so no one will notice. And then I'm just using my palette knife to make sure everything looks nice and perfect. That looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now I'm making the macarons. I rolled out the fondant about a half inch thick that does have the Tyler's powder in it. I have these circle cutters and I took one that's slightly smaller than the other. I have a piece of plastic. You stretch it on there so it's really tight and pressed down so you get kind of a curved cut to the macaron so it looks more like a cookie and not just like a circle. So I'm doing four circles of each color. And every time you want to make sure that plastic is tight on there so you get that rounded cut. Then I'm taking this tool and I'm just making a line around the bottom of that cookie and smooth it out with my fingers. And then I have a needle tool and I'm just poking holes in here just to get a little bit of texture so it looks more like a macaron. I'm doing that around the entire thing. And once that's done, I'm just gonna smooth that with my fingers and set that aside on a cutting board. And I did that for all of the colors. So it was ivory, tan, pink, and green. And again, doing the same thing, making the line close to the bottom, smooth that out with my fingers, and then take that needle tool and just try to make that little texture in there. And then of course I'm out of frame, but I'm using that smaller cutter to cut the center piece out, get some piping gel down, and stick the pieces together to make a little macaron. And then I have them all on a cutting board and let's set those aside. Now I got the cake out of the refrigerator. I'm going to clean the cake board again and I rolled out another one of those gold strips in the clay gun and I painted it gold and I wanted to do a bottom border as well. I felt like it would look so much better just to have that on there. Just straightening that out with my palette knife. And now I want to stack the cake. So I have my little ruler here. This will be linked in the description. I have my bubble tea straws and I'm making a little mark with a marker just past the end of the ruler. And I'm going to cut that marker off and throw that piece away and get my straws into the bottom tier. I'm setting it off to the back of the cake because I want room in the front. Get some icing down, make sure my hands are clean. And then I'm going to get that top tier out of the refrigerator. The icing is solid. I'm not going to mess it up. That cardboard circle is going to sit atop the straws, make sure it's level dowel the cake and I have a stacking video that goes into full detail. I will link that in the description. And now I'm adding my favorite buttercream texture on this cake. So I'm getting a very thin layer of buttercream on here, making sure it goes all the way down to that green cake. And this cake is just out of the refrigerator. So that icing is solid. I'm not going to mess it up. Just do a very thin layer of this buttercream icing. And then I'm making it go over the top of the cake. And then I'm going to take a clean piece of food safe plastic and I'm turning the turntable with my bottom hand and with the top hand, I'm just lifting that up against the cake as I turn it around just to create this cool little texture. And I have a video where I go into detail on how I make this and I will link that in the description. So I got another clean piece of plastic and I'm just refining that texture, just doing the same thing again. And that icing that's sticking 
off of the top of the cake, I'm just taking my spatula and scraping that off. And I could do that because that icing is solid. I'm not going to mess up the cake. And now I'm just taking my palette knife and I'm cleaning that up at the bottom and I'm removing that excess icing and wiping it into a dry paper towel. And I just wanted to refine that texture one more time with a clean piece of plastic. And that looks good. Let's put that back in the fridge. Now I am making the white bow that goes on the green tier. So I'm rolling out that white fondant really long and I'm using my ribbon cutter to cut a long strip, use my rulers to straighten it out. And now I'm making my bow. So I'm rolling this white fondant out really thin. It does have that Tylos powder mixed into it. And I'm cutting that in half and then align those straight edges next to each other. And I'm making the loops for the bow. So cut the ends off. And then I'm starting down on one side and then curve up and then come back down and then lift it up and put it back down so the fondant doesn't stick to each other and then do the same thing. Start on the side, curve down and curve up. So now I just want to smooth the edges and it's not symmetrical. So I want to put that back down and just try to cut a little bit more of that off. So those loops look a little more symmetrical. Fold that in half and it still looks like those loops are a little too long, so I'm gonna cut a little bit off of either side. Perfect. Now I'm getting a little bit of water on the edges and then fold up and down. And I'm gonna do the same thing for the other loop. Fold it up and then down. And I put it together and then I'm gonna use my X-Acto knife and just cut straight edges. And I'm making the little tails of the ribbon, so I cut two strips out and I'm cutting them on an angle. And then again, get a little bit of water down and squeeze it together and then get a little bit of water where it's going to touch the loop and press that together. And now I need to make the center of the bow. So I cut a little strip. I'm curving the edges down and get a little bit of water underneath just so that edge isn't jagged. And then I got a little bit of water behind the back and then I'm pressing each side of the bow onto that strip and then lift it up. It was a little too long, so I have to cut a little piece off and then tuck that behind. And there's your little bow. So I'm just gonna set that aside on a cutting board and then we're going to put on the cake. So again, I got that out of the fridge. I'm taking some piping gel across the back seam where it's gonna go and again, taking some Crisco around the rest of it because the Crisco is forgiving. I can manipulate that little ribbon into place, but the piping gel will really hold it together in the back where the seam is. So where the seam is, just cut it in half and then press that together. And again, using my palette knife to lift that up and just making sure that that looks nice and straight. And then I have my bow and I'm getting a little bit of piping gel behind the center and the two loops. And I'm going to hold that up, make sure it's center on the cake. And then I like to use the handle of my paintbrush to really press those loops onto that white ribbon. And then I want to give the little tails a little bit of motion. So I'm going to get a little bit of piping gel behind each tail and kind of curve them and stick them down. Now we're making the bow for the top of the cake. So again, I'm cutting a piece of pink fondant in half, cut the edges off so they're straight lift the fondant up so it doesn't stick together and place that back down. I'm starting on the one side and I really want to make a more dramatic loop. So I'm going up and then I'm coming down on the other side. I'm keeping the bottom flat because this is going on top of the cake. I don't want to round the bottom like we did before and peel that back. I'm taking my fingers and I'm just smoothing those cuts. And again, just getting a little bit of water behind the edge and fold it down and up and do the same thing for the other side. Get some water behind, fold it down and up. And then I'm using my X-Acto knife to cut the straight edges and put that on a cutting board. I have a paper towel, rip it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, and then roll it up. And I'm gonna stick the paper towel in the loops so they don't collapse. Fold it in half and half again and roll from one end to the other. And now let's make the tail. So I have that ribbon cutter. I'm cutting two really long ribbons because I want these tails to cascade down the side of the cake. I'm taking my fingers and smoothing my cuts and then I'm gonna cut each one on an angle and cut straight on the top. And again, I'm gonna get that bow 
And I'm gonna fold it up and down, get some mortar behind it and press that together. And I'm doing the same thing for the other one. And same process as we did before. I wanna stick the tails to the loop. So get some mortar behind it and press them together. And I'm gonna make the center of the bow too. So I cut a little strip and I'm curving down the sides, get some mortar behind it. So the edge looks nice and pretty. And then get mortar behind the whole thing and place half of the bow on one half, half of the bow on the other, get some mortar in the middle. Make sure the tail isn't in the way and lift that center piece up and then tuck it behind the bow and press it down. Now let's put this on the cake. So I'm lifting it up and because that has Tyler's powder in it, it's able to hold its shape. So I'm getting a little bit of icing behind these tails. So I like to stick icing to icing. I feel like it holds a lot better than using piping gel, but you can use whatever you want to be able to stick these to the cake. And I'm, you see how I'm trying to give it a little bit of motion. So I'm curving the little tails just so it looks like it's falling down the cake. And just using my fingers just to get these in the correct position. Then I have some piping gel underneath here. So I use piping gel. I use icing. There are many different ways that I stick decorations to cakes. I have a video where I talk about that and I will link that in the description. And now I need to get this bow in the right spot. So the fondant is still a little too soft, so it's falling over. I wanna get a little bit of piping gel underneath that center part where it's sticking to the cake. I'm removing the paper towel, and you see how the, the loops are knocking over? So I'm sticking the handle of my paintbrush in there, and I'm opening it at the bottom so the bow is covering a wider area, and it's less likely to fall over. And I'm doing that for both of the loops. And then I want to stick the paper towels back in there because the fondant is still soft and I don't want them to fall over while it goes back in the fridge. And then I took it out of the fridge and I want to get these macarons on here. I have no idea how I want them to look, so I'm playing my little game of let me put this here, see if I like it, let me put this here. And I'm just, before I stick them to the cake, I'm just sticking them in any different position so I can move them around as I see fit. <laughs> And then once I find them in a right position, then I'm gonna get some icing behind it, maybe get some piping gel behind them, whatever you need to do to stick them to the cake. And this one on the bottom here, I'm gonna rip a toothpick in half and then hammer that toothpick into the cake board. It was still sticking out a little too much, so I'm taking my snips and cutting that out, get some icing underneath and press that down. All right, so I'm just getting icing behind each of the macarons wherever it's touching the cake and sticking that down. I'm going to remove it, the excess icing with a dry paintbrush and just sticking these down. Get some toothpicks underneath the ones that are on the top of the cake and stick that down. So use toothpicks, I use icing, anything that I can do to make sure that these are secure to the cake and are not going to fall off. And there is the cake, how beautiful. There you go, how pretty is this cake? I just love the big bow and the simplicity of it all. So this cake, the top tier is a three layer, non-torted six inch cake. And the bottom tier is a two layer, torted eight inch cake. And I have a video talking about when I tort and when I don't tort my layers, and I will link that in the description for you. And this cake feeds about 36 to 44 people. And I made this cake for my friend and she cuts my hair and she always gives me discounts when she cuts my hair. So I discounted her on this cake. So this cake, I would normally charge $425. However, I gave her a 20% discount. So I ended up making $340 on this cake. So I think that's it. What new techniques did you learn in this video? I would love to know. Leave them in the comments below. And just a reminder, I now have a Cake Academy membership program. There are three tiers to the program. The bottom tier is a cake pop tier where you can support me with my content creation and get some free and discounted extras. Extras are things like PDFs and recipe books that I release. And then the top two tiers, the cupcake tier and the dessert table tier, 
both have access to my exclusive Facebook group where we are bouncing ideas off of each other. You can get pricing advice in there. And I also go live in that Facebook group. I did a marshmallow fondant live. And last week I did a live showing you how I ice really smooth buttercream cakes. So I would love to have you aboard. I will put the link in the description. Please like this video if you liked it. And if you're enjoying my tutorials, I would be so grateful if you could buy me a coffee. My link's in the description. Everything's in the description. <laughs> and I'd love it if you kept in touch on social media and you can check out my website. And if you want to stick around, you can watch this video next and hit subscribe and the bell if you haven't already. Thank you so much for watching. I love you guys. <laughs> and remember, it's cake, have fun. I will see you on the next one. Bye.